Am I the a-hole for supporting my son and wanting to go non-contact with my soon-to-be ex-wife? So this is a pretty simple one, I think. My wife, 39 female, and I, 39 male, are going through an admittedly pretty messy divorce. I thought everything was fine with our relationship until my son, 14 male, told me that he walked in on her cheating on me with our next-door neighbor's son, 20-ish, I think, and that it's been going on for a year now. Obviously, I do the expected thing and move out and file for divorce, since she'll probably end up with a house. The thing is, my son wanted to come with me. I made him stay with her till I got a place lined up, but ever since he's been living with me and is refusing to spend time with her or even speak with her, the entire time I've been supportive of this. She's come as far as I'm concerned, and I don't see why I should try to convince him otherwise. Custody came up in a divorce, for both requesting primary, and when it came to asking my son what he wanted, he said that he didn't want anything to do with my wife. Ever since then, my wife has been plastering all over social media that I've been poisoning him against her, which is causing a lot of other family members and others I know to get on my case about it. While I wouldn't say that I've been poisoning him, I haven't exactly been trying to get him to think better of her, which is what some of my family members and friends are angry at me for doing. My sister especially has been on my case about it. She tells me that I should be telling my son off whenever he expresses how he feels about his mother and that I should be encouraging him to sort things out with her and to see things from her perspective. While I understand that this is something that would help him get some form of a relationship back with her, I honestly don't see how it's my place to do that. My wife cheated on me for a college kid and threw me and our son away for it. I don't get why I should be helping her to get away with this regarding our son and his feelings about the situation. My sister and everyone else I've shared my thoughts with are calling me Major a major a for it. So I'd like to see if others who don't know either of us agree with them or whether or not it's just a microcosm of our social group and family. So am I the a-hole? Now for the top comments. Not the a-hole. He's old enough to make that decision for himself. You're just supporting and enabling him to make that decision. Just be aware of the influence you have when you talk about her with him. Not the a-hole. OP, what your wife did was hideous and your son witnessed it himself. So you were not poisoning his mind. His mom did that all by herself. But your child definitely needs therapy and I think it would help you too to get into therapy yourself. As for the family members who are blaming you, tell them to mind their business or you will cut contact with them too. I personally am not in favor of social media's smear campaigns as it does more harm than good and can easily get out of hand. So block and ignore your ex. Other than that, Try your best to get full custody of your son and don't pressure your son to start having a relationship with his mom again. He can do that if he wants to down the road. I will say this though, before the exit is, I definitely hit one of her posts up complaining about Opie poisoning her son against her with a, well actually Opie's wife was caught by son smashing 20 year old neighbor and then came to his own conclusion about the value of his mother and then screenshot. Post to Reddit for karma and wait for her to block you while having the solace that 50% of the people that interacted with that post now knows the facts. Oh, and not stay home. Not stay home. I'm sorry your wife did that to you. But I'm hundred in supporting of kids deciding whether they want to put themselves in that situation. So long as you make sure your son knows you would facilitate any contact he wants with the ex-wife in the future, you're doing the best for him. Obviously, don't talk bad about her to him, etc. But he's old enough now to make decisions, and if he doesn't want contact, I think it's fair to respect that. For context, my 14-year-old just moved back to me after 5 years with her dad. At that time, she was mistreated, gaslighted, poisoned against me, and I had no contact with her. Eventually, she came to see me and saw how much she lied to her and how bad things were there. She's now with me and under police advisory to not talk to him or have anything to do with her dad. And I've been advised from professionals that you shouldn't and can't really ever force a child to have contact with a parent or to not contact them. It only serves to damage them emotionally in the long run. Trust your son. He needs to heal from this too. Continue to be supportive to him at any future relationship with his mom and you'll be okay. I felt like I was reading a post made by my family member because I'm experiencing the exact same situation from your son's point of view. Not stay home. He's old enough to form his own opinions and make up his mind. 
My advice would be to not discuss it unless he wants to talk about the situation. Because if you continuously bring it up, your family members and ex-wife will claim to be justified in you poisoning him. Similar with me. Though I discovered my dad was cheating when I was 21, so I was in college and not living at home full-time, and got married less than a year later and moved out permanently. My mom constantly, even four years later after their divorce has been finalized, complains about my dad to me and it's very hard to deal with. And every time I tell her I don't want to talk about it, she gets upset with me. I still love my dad as my dad, so it's hard to hear her complaints. I think it's important for the dad in this situation to do his best not to poison his son's opinion of his mom because while she was awful in cheating and OP, she is still his son's mom. A person can be an awful partner and still a good parent, and therapy should definitely be required. But in the end, it's still the son's decision and I don't blame him for being betrayed by his mother and not wanting to see her. Not today, home. Next story is titled, Am I the a-hole for refusing to see my dad because of my stepmother's racist comments? I'm 16 female and half white, half Chinese. My parents have been split up for a while, so I'm mostly over it. They're a lot happier without each other, so while it sucked, it's fine. It's weird sometimes when I'm with my dad, people assume I'm adopted, but usually he's good at correcting people, except for my stepmom. I really did try to like her in the beginning, but she's kind of racist. The first time I met her, she wouldn't stop touching and commenting on my hair and how it looked like a K-pop star. It just got worse the longer they were together. She would do things like tell people she was my tiger mom, I'd make comments about my body type and plastic surgery, and when she moved in, she had my dad ask me to only speak English in the house. I'd watch English shows because it made her uncomfortable if she couldn't understand what was being said. When they got married, she kind of sneakily left me out of the wedding photos. And when I asked why, she said she wanted a certain aesthetic, which I guess is a nice way of saying white. I've talked to my dad about it a lot and he says he'll talk to her, but he never does. And also that she just doesn't have a lot of familiarity with Asian people. So I have to be patient with her because she's learning. My mom and stepdad were really angry about how she treats me, but they can't exactly do anything about my stepmom. So they just said that if I ever feel like I need to leave, I can call either of them at any time and they'll come get me. It really hit the fan a couple of weeks ago. My stepmom is pregnant and had her baby shower and I heard her make a comment about how I don't look very much like my dad. So now he'll also have a kid that resembles him. And I just couldn't take it anymore. I called my mom to come pick me up and left. My dad called me a few hours later and I told him what his wife said. And he said he would talk to her but I told him he always says that and nothing changes. So I'm not coming over to his house anymore. And maybe he should stick with his white family. Stepmother texted me to apologize, but I told her it wasn't accepted and I don't want to talk to her anymore. My mom and stepdad and my grandparents on the side support me, but my dad is really upset and my grandparents on my dad's side are really mad at me and people have been telling me that even if my stepmom is being a pill, I shouldn't write off my dad because he's not the one doing it. I love my dad, but I just don't want to see his wife again. And if that means I don't see my dad too because he won't stand up to her, maybe that's how it needs to be. Not today, home. Your racist stepmom is, and so is your racist dad. Your dad supporting her beliefs make him racist too? You don't deserve to be treated like that just because you don't meet their aesthetic. I know, right? That's messed up. Opie's future sibling will probably ask in the future, why is Opie not in the wedding pictures? Opie's stepmom be like, because she's not part of the aesthetics. WTF? You mean because she's not white, really? That's what it is. Not stay home. Cut these people from your life completely. If your father does nothing to stop the stepmother, he condones it. He married her knowing her views, which makes him racist. He married her knowing she was awful to his daughter, which makes him a failure as a father. Opie needs to keep herself emotionally safe from her loser bigot dad. Next story. Am I the a-hole for telling my significant other that his daughter cannot come over to our new house until we meet up again? Me 26 female and my significant other 32 male have been together for 5 years. And he has two children with his ex Anna, 31 female. They have Leo, 8 male, and Leia, 14 female together. 
Me and my significant other decided to wait until we were dating for one year for me to meet his children. We met up for lunch at a local restaurant, and while Leo liked me, Leia didn't speak a word. I assumed she was not ready to warm up to me just yet. After that, we scaled back to brief video calls where she wouldn't say anything. This went on for another six months, and then me and my significant other moved in together. Leo came every other week for visits for the first month, and Leia never came. She told significant other she didn't want to be around me, so she wasn't going to come for visitation. So my significant other did visitation at a sister's house. This worked out okay. It was just awkward because the sister lives five minutes away from our old apartment, and the kids lived 20 minutes away from us. So it was a lot of driving back and forth. This has been the arrangement for years. The entire time, I've been inviting Leia out through my significant other with us to get to know her better. We go out at least four to five times per month and do various activities. Parks, museums, zoo, malls, go-karts, restaurants, everything. Leo tags along sometimes, but Leia's never come. March 1st, I closed on my dream apartment. Three beds, two and a half baths, study, huge balcony, it's gorgeous. We've moved in and I'm so excited to start making our home here. I posted a video on social media and Anna seen it and showed Leia. Anna blew up my significant other's phone asking him when he was going to tell Leia that he moved. He did tell Leia. And she said, oh, okay. After Leia seen our new home, she asked significant other when she would be able to come over and decorate her new room. I told him under no circumstances will Leia be allowed into her new room until she agrees to meet us outside for an outing. I love her because she's my partner's daughter, but I don't know her. I've only ever heard her voice in videos she posts to social media. She has never spoken a word to me. My significant other is incredibly sad because he just wants his daughter to visit him again, but he agrees with me. Anna and Leia obviously disagree, and so does my in-laws. Am I the a-hole? Now for the comments. Everyone sucks here. For the past five years, everybody has agreed to let a child, she was nine at the beginning, decide if slash when slash where she wanted to see her father. Also, if you bought that apartment with your significant other, his daughter has every right to come whenever she wants, as it is also her home. The adults need to do better by that child. I actually agree with this. My significant other has allowed a situation to drag out for four years, and it's unfair to all of us. He allowed a child to dictate the terms of their relationship. Four years of family events where he had to exclude me because she wouldn't come if I was there. Four years of living a double life to keep us separated. I purchased that apartment with my own money. I made sure to include a private bedroom for her when she was ready to come around. I'm assuming she's ready now, but she is saying she absolutely does not want to go out for dinner or an activity. She just wants to decorate and start coming over. She wants a relationship with her father, not with you. That's her right. The more you're going to push, the more she's going to run. Is it going to suck for you? Yes. But you made a choice to move in with him knowing he had a daughter who wanted nothing to do with you. You either accept that or tell your significant other to find another place to live. Cool. That's her right. She can have that relationship at a sister's then because her apartment isn't his apartment. It has got no right to demand a room for the kid. Yep, the bio parents have had five years to establish a relationship and set boundaries that would let Opie get to know the 14-year-old at least enough that the 14-year-old would already have their space in the apartment. The 14-year-old made her choice, and now she's learning that what she does or doesn't do may have unforeseen consequences. Opie has every right not to have a stranger in her home. All she's asking for is an outing to get to know the girl. Now for the last story. Am I the a-hole for how I'm treating my daughter? My daughter, 32 female, and I, 69 female, are very close. We used to live in the southern part of the US. I divorced her father when she was 13, and then she made a decision to cut him out of her life. So it's pretty much been just the two of us ever since. About nine years ago, she chose to move up to the East Coast to look for work after her college graduation. I was supportive and happy when she found something. About five years ago, my mom died, so I had a family left in the South. 
I wanted to move. And it was either move to the east coast to be near my daughter or move out west to be near my brother and his partner. My daughter said, if you want to move up here, I'm fine with it. But don't do it just for me because I'm not attached to this area, so who knows if I'll stay. I said he understood but decided to move there anyway. I purchased a condo in the same town and have lived here ever since. About two years ago, my daughter needed to move out of her apartment because of some issues with her neighbors, and it just so happened that the condo next door to mine became available to rent. The rent was too good for her to pass up, so she moved in. I love that we live so close. Anyway, about eight months ago, she started dating a man from a town about an hour away. They are planning on her moving in with him, since he owns his house, which means she will be about an hour away from me. I'm happy for her, and I like her boyfriend, but I'm not going to lie that I'm a little sad about her moving. Anyway, for the last few months, she has become very short with me on a lot of topics. Like, I ask her if her boyfriend is okay with the state of cleanliness that her condo is. I don't think she cleans it well enough, and will be fine with his home being like that. She just blankly stares at me and bluntly says, Yes, he's been to my place and knows what it looks like. Or when I ask if she was going to start making herself look pretty for the day once she has him around all the time. She works from home and he does for a part of the week too. She, again, just stared at me and bluntly said, He knows what I look like, so I'm fine. The other issue is that his parents live in the same town as him and the two of them see them all of the time for dinners and such. A lot more than they see me. I guess some of my jealousy shows in my face. Because she has commented on it several times, but I just act like everything is fine. All in all, she's making me feel like I'm treating her badly recently. But being so short with me and I'm afraid that I'm not ever going to see her after she moves. Am I the a-hole? You're the a-hole. I don't know if this is specifically a southern thing or if it extends to more cultures. But comments like you're making to your daughter made me incredibly insecure. If I didn't clean enough, I was unlovable. If I didn't do my makeup, I wasn't pretty. So my natural face wasn't pretty. You're making these comments to make her feel less secure in her relationship. Whether you're doing it consciously or not, the result is the same. You are undermining her self-confidence. And yes, you're probably going to lose your close bond. No one wants to be around someone who makes them feel self-conscious. No one wants to be around someone who makes them feel unlovable. Saxon here. When I was in college, my boyfriend and I evacuated to my grandparents' ranch following a hurricane. I was an evacuee. I was on a ranch. I wasn't wearing makeup or dressing up, but that's not any different from any other time on a ranch. My granny told me I had let myself go, presumably because the boyfriend would see me at my worst since it was never a problem prior. Ranch kid here. Well, it's a good thing she can cook said at the end of a muddy, bloody day of me working kettle. Thanks, Pops. You just undermined pretty much all of the fears and dependence you instilled in me. All for a laugh from the menfolk. 